End Separateness, an essay by Eric Schechter. Most people don't know, don't care, and feel powerless. Those are symptoms of the culture of separateness that is killing the world. Activists are too few to be powerful. They do care, and they think they know. But most of them are only advocating superficial change. They don't see the systemic change that is needed. They form many different organizations to protest against seemingly different problems. Corruption, racism, sexism, bullying, unemployment, poverty, war, ecocide. But these problems can't be addressed one by one. These problems are just symptoms of the underlying root problem, our culture of separateness. Not caring and not sharing are the psychological and economic sides of separateness. I'll explain how they reinforce each other. John Lennon sang, Imagine no possessions. I wonder if you can. But most people today can't imagine it. Private property is as unnoticed and unquestioned as the air we breathe, because it has been the basis of our culture for the last 10,000 years though we shared for a hundred thousand years before that. We need to question property, because war, poverty, and ecocide will continue as long as they increase someone's property. The board game Monopoly always ends with severe economic inequality. That doesn't depend on whether anyone cheats. It's inherent in the game's principles. Likewise, the severe economic inequality in our society today doesn't depend on corruption. It's inherent in this simple economic principle. If we don't share, then we must trade, and that favors the trader in the stronger bargaining position, thus making him stronger still. That increases inequality, and the long-term result is that a few people have vastly more wealth than everyone else. It's inevitable that those few people will then have vastly more influence over our lives than everyone else. Wealth is influence. It finds its way through or around regulations and regulators more surely than water finds a way downhill. The 2014 research of Gillens and Page showed quantitatively that we are ruled by the wealthy class. The only way to avoid that is to not have a wealthy class. But that requires sharing, as I've already explained. And every market transaction also has externalities. That is, unmeasured side effects that the buyer and seller don't pay for, and that they ignore when negotiating their price. Thus, market prices are far from true costs, and have none of the efficiency and wisdom for which they are so often praised. Conventional economics textbooks gloss over externalities as though they were tiny, but they include war, poverty, and ecocide, which is taking away our future. Markets can't plan for the future because CEOs must compete against each other in offering short-term profits to investors. Recognizing this, we should delegitimize markets. Psychopaths seek power over other people. Conversely, having power turns normal people into psychopaths, as the Stanford Prison Experiment demonstrated. We should restructure our society to avoid concentrations of power. We should abandon not just markets, but representative democracy, too. We'd be better off with direct democracy, decentralized power, and peer-to-peer -peer networking. But the evil is not just in our rulers. It's in all of us, in the foundations of our way of life. Our privately owned workplaces are not democracies. That's why we hate Mondays, and why progress means layoffs, not leisure. Competition destroys any trust or empathy, and the resulting stress is medically harmful, too. It's even in the so-called American dream. You keep your stuff in your house, I keep my stuff in my house, I don't need to care about you, and I can't afford to care about you. It's no wonder that racism, sexism, bullying, and murder are commonplace. We'll only be made safe and whole by a culture that encourages our better side, a culture of caring and sharing, where no one is left behind and no one wants to hurt others. The selfish will find reasons to become unselfish. Equal pay for equal work, 
may be a sort of justice, but love is more generous, from each according to ability to each according to need. Let's delegitimize separateness. Such enormous changes in our lives can only succeed if there's widespread desire for them, based on widespread understanding of the need for them. Can our awakening spread faster than the ecosystem can collapse? I don't know, but we should try. The first step is simply to get more people talking about it.